Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, a few weeks ago I made a video on uh, making a little Manchurian pear box. Uh, but unfortunately at the very last uh, second almost of the project, when I thought I'd finished it, um, I discovered the lid was extremely fragile and it just broke away. So several people have suggested that I might make a little bowl out of the lid. And so that's what I shall attempt to do. So here's the lid, and you can see where it broke off, so there's a sharp rim here. Now there was a groove on the inside uh, which allowed me to turn the outside, so that goes back over the jaws. And these are shark jaws, Vicmark shark jaws, so they're a bit further out from the chuck, which is always handy. And then I'm going to turn this off using a... 3 8 spindle gouge. I'm just coming in very gently, easing the tool in with my thumb. And that's just a wee bit easier. Right, if you want to get rid of that sharp edge. Uh, and that really is all I need to do from that side. Just get it true, get rid of everything I don't want. So I now put the camera around the other side and uh, we'll take a look at the foot. So having moved the camera, I now find there's a teeny little ridge just there. So I don't really want that. Oh, it will come off that way. And the next thing to do is to remove uh, the button in the top, so just use the wing of the tool for that. Pivot it in off the rest, so it's just really like an oar and a rollock. Just swinging into the tool, Oops. broke off, cross grain. Now, the question is, do I have enough wood? I've got two places where I would like to have a foot. Uh, really, the wider the better, generally. But one is, these are both divide. These are dividers set to chuck diameter, so we can go. I can go to that diameter or this diameter, which I would prefer. So making a mark with the left so it lines up with the right. So what have I got inside? That is the crucial point. So get some calipers in there and find out. Wrong side. So that is how much wood I've got. Um, so there's should be enough wall thickness. So I'm going to go for the larger one. Um, that means I can take the bottom stuff away here. Jewel 3 it's spindle guard. Although this is face work, you can use a spindle gouge on it. Now, have a better look here. I'm trying to work around the camera without dodging it. So I want the centre with a little bobble just between the two points. Uh, that'll do. Right. So I'm going to mark that depth now. Line the bevel up with the direction I want to go, which is straight in and then I just lever they bring the handle up and that pivots the edge in on the right line and I'm going to take that away the easiest way to do it was a square end scraper just in there right so again we're going to get there now this is going to be a This is the skewed, it's actually a shear scraper with the rounded side, but I'm going to use it flat on the rest here. 
and that's tilted down very slightly so the angle, it's always important when you're on a flat surface like this, the angle between the top of the tool and the surface you're cutting has to be less than 90 degrees, what they call the negative rake. And you don't need a special negative rate scraper to do this. This is fine. And I might as well use the same one and come around here. Now the wood we've already ascertained is a bit thin, so I'm not going to have a particularly big foot. So three eight spindle gouge again right on its side. Just ease it in on top of the foot and Rotate it very slightly anti-clockwise. You can see where the dust is coming off there. And then I can turn the tool over, use the other wing to just do the other side. So that's rounded. A brazier will do it anyway. But And now coming around the edge here, there's still the hint of that little rim in there. And I'm going to shear scrape that, tilting this tool up on its side. And you didn't see that, did you? So I'm going to have to move the camera. Right, all over again. I don't need to do it, but I can do it flat. Just gently stroke the surface. Or I can tilt it up on edge. That's why it has a rounded side that slides easily up and down the rest. And it gives me a nice, oh, very nice smooth surface. Um, now, how thick is it? Well, I'm going to have to take the ridge out, the um, little shoulder out on the inside. So I don't think we'll risk uh, putting a bead in there. Uh, I had to think about it. I'll just sand this. Uh, we start with 180 grit. <laughs> Which is uh, 240 grit. And that's quite fine enough, really. Beeswax this is a pretty solid, uh, dense timber, so the beeswax will be fine on the surface. And the idea is to build up a sticky layer, and then I bring out the sock which is now full of wax it could almost stand up on its own and we'll melt it into the wood quite nice quick and easy so that can now turn round And uh, we turn it out. So I'll just shift the camera again. Not a huge amount there, so start off with a 3 8 deep fluted bowl gouge. So the fingers are behind, hands on the rest. Um, the fingers are behind the where I'm going to be cutting, and the thumb axe is a, a horizontal fulcrum. Not very much to play with in there. And the bowl scraper. I 
idea always is to get as big a tool as possible inside what I'm trying to cut. Now that really wasn't um, cutting quite as well as I might have liked, so take the top off the old burr off and then use it. Uh, just posted a little video on how to use the scraper so you get a good view from the side in that. Right, here. So the idea is to have a curve just inside the curve I'm trying to cut. Or the radius on the tool is just inside the curve I'm trying to cut and that will do. Let's check the inside shoulders all gone. Yep. hand sanding uh, there's a good chance that some of the grain uh, especially on the end grain just gets a bit pulled out so it sits up a bit further so if you've got a reverse then it's useful to reverse sand And that's removed the sitting up grain just like that. That is that. So we've got a little kind of ring bowl, which would, uh, yes, little ring bowl, quite useful. So there you have it, a small bowl rescued from a failed lid. Uh, a little object that should outlive a lot of us. <laughs>